Hello Internet, Justin Muir here from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm going to run through a quick composite image I made uh, using two images, one from New Zealand and one from inside the studio. Um, and I'm going to take you from the beginning to the end of that kind of quickly, but just so you can kind of get an overview of my workflow and how I make an image. So enjoy. Uh, so I went to New Zealand last month um, for my honeymoon. Uh, I got married this year. and. I didn't go photography minded, so I mean, obviously, I was going to take pictures, but I didn't really have, um, you know, any set locations or spots that I wanted to shoot. So it was just kind of, if something cool showed up, I would take a picture of it. Uh, we stayed at a really rad little cabin spot in Paparoa National Park, and it had an amazing view. Uh, here's the view. Uh, and so I had a tripod with me, a little travel tripod, and just set up this shot quick um, to take some multiple exposures. And these are the two shots that I will be working with. Um, I ended up putting my wife Veronica in the frame so I could kind of get a reference of how big a person would be in the shot. Um, like I said, I didn't have any lights or anything like that, which you don't necessarily need, but um, you know, didn't really want to set up a whole photo shoot while we are trying to enjoy ourselves. So, these are the two images I'm gonna be starting with. Um, and when I saw this, I definitely felt like there could be something happening in this area. Um, you know, if I had this location and um, more time, and you know, it wasn't in New Zealand, 20 hours away, uh, it would set up a nice shoot. But I didn't have that, so I ended up just taking a background plate and was gonna to add to it later. So after exporting these two images, you get to throw them in Photoshop and you start with just the background play. I took Veronica out as you can see, um, because unfortunately I actually didn't take one without her in it because we were so working so quick with it. Um, and then the overexposed, which is at 83%, um, just because the skies are never that dark. Um, and the way I select the sky out so it's not just, you know, over like that, um, I have my background plate and I go and I select the color range and I select white just right over here. I usually just crank it all the way up to 200. Um, and it selects pretty accurately. Um, and this doesn't always work depending on the sky and the location. This image happens to work relatively well with because it's um, pretty, pretty cut out well. Uh, it never really works exactly, so you have to do some manipulating after. So what you do with the image is, you know, here's the selection, but you can kind of go in, and I already did this, so I won't really kind of go into too much um, detail, but you kind of go in and feather a little bit out of the sky so it doesn't look too fake um, or cut out. It still does, obviously, you can kind of see right here right there, uh, not too bad. So, you know, you can kind of see some spots and if you want to get really detailed and I might later on, you can kind of go in and get rid of those. But for now, um, when zoomed out at a distance, doesn't look too bad. Um, so I start with my background plate and I think the importance is having, you know, two strong images. I don't do insane composites where it's a 20 different photos, and may, you know, maybe I will, but for now I try to keep it pretty simple and don't add too much extra to the frame or to the image. I try to keep it um, relatively simple. Uh, you can go on my site and see about three or four composite images. So now we're going to go the adjustment layers on the background layer, and we will go one by one. I haven't actually gone through this before, so I might not know what each layer does because I do I work pretty quickly and I don't really like label anything. So we'll start with this. This is just a dodge and burn layer, just a 50% gray overlay. Um, and I just lightened up the outside. I could have done that in Lightroom too, but I just decided to do it with this. This is probably a, um, a later on adjustment that I made. Um, and then here are some color adjustments. Um, added some magenta, some reds and yellows. I believe, yep. And a levels adjustment to kind of bring down the darks. Um, you can kind of go in here and look at your levels. This is still not really that great. Obviously, you can see this is still overexposed, uh, but I doesn't. I don't mind that. 
And lastly is a trickier one. Not a lot of people do this, or maybe they do, and I don't know, but this is basically kind of kicks up the highlights. Um, and I can explain this one a little bit better. What this is, if I can bring it back to its normal, normal state here, is just um, a color yellow painted over the kind of greenery in the in, in the scene. Um, what I do to this is make it only visible on the highlights and it kind of brings out and it pops up the, the highlights just a little bit. So what you do is you go to blending options um, and under, over here where it's underlying layer you can slide this back and forth um, but if you just slide this one by holding option um, it only starts to be visible in the highlights. So you have is basically this, which is just on the highlights. Now that doesn't look good because there's no, um, you, you have no filter on it like this. So what I do is I put soft light on it so it kind of blends in with the background. So you can kind of see it just bumps up the highlights and I'll usually back that down so it doesn't look terribly fake. Um, so it's not a crazy adjustment, but it definitely pops in. There's a billion ways to do that, but that's the way I choose it, so it adds a little color to it. Um, so that's basically the background plate. So there wasn't that much to be done to it besides combining the images and slight color adjustments. Um, I didn't go, there's a sun flare here, I didn't try to take that out. Um, I didn't move plants or get rid of anything aside from Veronica that was right there, but I did that earlier. Let's see if I have that actual image. No, I don't. Um, so, you know, not too much to be done to this image, which is how I like to keep composite images. They should kind of start off relatively close. And here's the person. So this is a friend's daughter, um, and what I wanted to do is add a person, uh, a child running through this scene with a kite, trying to keep it playful. Um, it definitely felt like, you know, a family could be here playing and, and wanted to have that kind of motion and that, that youthfulness to it. So I decided to add her into it. I had set up a shoot with her um, for a different reason and had her stand in for this. I'll open that shoot so you can kind of see with Kaylin, here's a couple shots. So these are a couple of the shots we did. And so afterwards, uh, I had her stand in for this image. Uh, this is my dude Hutch, who stood in for lighting tests. Uh, so I'm interrupting quickly because I forgot to kind of elaborate a little bit more on the lighting setup and how I place the subject and shoot and match it up with the scene. Um, so Basically, when I'm shooting for this, you kind of have to pay attention to the angle that you're shooting your subject at and the lighting. So in this case, there's only one light right here, the sun. Uh, obviously a lot of ambient light, but there's one directional light, and I'm shooting from about 10 feet up on the deck of the place we were staying, so I'm shooting down. Uh, so I had to match that in the studio. So here, I am shooting up on a ladder, um, not the same distance away, but that's not always as critical. Um, so, but trying to match the actual like height that I'm shooting. Probably could have gone a little higher, but I couldn't get any higher on the ladder. And then for the lights, um, I am just, I have two lights here. Generally I would try to only do one, but I don't have enough room in my studio to kind of back up that far. So I have these two lights creating a rim light around her, um, cutting her out from the background and mimicking the sun. I have one Octobox here just basically lighting her face. I generally would probably put it over here because uh, that's where the sun is mostly coming from, but I wanted to light her face up a little bit more, so I put it on this side. And I added this foam core board here to kind of bounce off here, and this light back over here to add more light so it kind of evened out so there wasn't too harsh of a shadow. Um, and that's basically how I lit that. And then basically just ran through a bunch of different options for this um, and landed on one that I liked, pick it out, export it, and cut her out. I won't go through that because that is a whole other process. I do keep the PSD in the actual composite file. So this is actual, uh, this is a Photoshop file that is over here. So you can kind of see um, where it starts from there. And then I a couple of random things to it just to kind of match what's there. So this keeps it high res so you can work on those minor details because if it's this small, I mean it's still 
pretty big. You can kind of get in there and see detail, but um, a little harder to work uh, on an image that, that small, so I like to keep the full res in there. Uh, and so now working on just trying to match this to the background because it's, it's sticking out just a little bit. Um, and I'd kind of do this differently every time, but uh, first we'll add the shadow. Um, still working on this, but uh, trying to match. You can kind of see other shadows in here, so you can kind of match what they look like so it looks similar um, and the directions and stuff like that. So you add the shadow there and then you kind of go and, I'm sorry, this is the actual image, original image, and then you kind of go and add adjustment layers. So let's see what I did here. I started with a little highlight add right here and next, this doesn't seem to do anything. Then I killed the shadows a little bit um, with the curves adjustment, just to kind of, what I did is try to match. You can kind of see these, um, the plants, the, they're a little washed out, because when things are backlit like that, uh, it tends to kind of wash out the, the, the darks. So I did that with her. Um, and then I added, oh, there's, this is a tiny adjustment. I added a little stick in her hand for the kite string. I just, I think I just Google stick on <laughs> and pick the first image that came up. Um, and then the last but not least, I added this screen layer of kind of a, a, a eye dropped color right here to kind of match um, the washed outness of, of the plants and her. So it kind of looks a little similar. So you can see without that, she kind of sticks out. I mean, it, it does work still, but. In a perfect world, I would have shot this a little differently. I probably would have uh, blocked the sun, so I got those darker darks there, and there was no sunbeam. But like I said, it's not what I—I I, I wasn't there for a photo shoot, so I did it pretty quickly. Um, all right, so that's her. That's basically it. You know, it's each process is a little longer, but you know, I try not to do too many adjustment layers. Um, and then I added the kite and I shot this in the studio two days ago. I uh, just bought a kite off of Amazon, had my uh, fan so I could get a little bit of the wind pulled to it, and here is the adjustments for that. So here's the kite. I added a little highlights to the side to make it a little bit more like it was getting hit by the sun, and then the same thing here, added a little bit more pop to the side, and that's pretty much it. And then added the line, uh, drew that in Illustrator, and had it go up. You can kind of see up here, added those connection lines. Ba, ba, ba. So there, there's the kite, and the line, and the last but not least, just a, another small adjustment layer um, to kind of add to the sunbeam sunburst, uh, and that is basically this. So we have uh, a multiply layer back there because before when I said it was overexposed I don't try to dial that down a little bit you don't have to but just kind of added a little color to it and then an overlay layer of the same thing that just kind of this wash of color that kind of makes this a little like a little more sun drenched and you can do that in in Lightroom but I like to kind of keep all the color adjustments to Photoshop so I keep the images relatively natural and cool and I don't really like bump up the, uh, the warmth and images in Lightroom. Um, and then some brightness contrast, uh, and we're good. So we went from this to that. Not crazy, but a little more interest in the image. Um, you know, bring some personality to that shot. It's just not a landscape shot anymore. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that was helpful um, for anyone who does landscape images but likes portraiture more. This is a way to combine both um, and have some fun. So any questions, leave them in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try to do this more often. Um, I say that every year and don't do it, but who knows? Maybe this year is different. All right, have a good day.